it's becoming a true management level professional job. And growing grass is a given. Along with all of the advancements in technology and improvements brought about by superintendents, the demands of the game have likewise increased. The level of conditioning on golf courses today is expected by both the golfer and the superintendent. Just a few decades ago, things were a lot different. The 50s and 60s and uh, when the, the golf courses uh, never really got through the summer, in August we always had a great deal of uh, brown patch and nowadays the advancements in the uh, Greens superintendent are just, they can keep the course in great shape. This conditioning is continuing to improve as the superintendent pushes to make the golf courses even better. As courses get better, the golfer seems to expect even more. It's a hard job. It's, it's, it's oftentimes a thankless job. But I th absolutely, there's no question the increased play, uh, increased diversity of the play, uh, the demands for perfection on a golf course, and, and, and just really not appreciating the fact that you know, grass lives and dies. I mean, they want it right all the time. So I think the, the game as it has expanded and grown and it's, the golf course has gotten better, has made the life of superintendent, I think pretty hard. Uh, we, we, we strive to be better every day. We want to have the next best thing the next day, every day. And that, that I think, is the attitude, which is great. A lot of the demands of the game probably is, is a two-part demand, where one is what the superintendent demands of himself as an increased performance and make the golf course better, and also as the game changes, and as TV golf has become more popular where you see a fantastic conditioned golf course on TV, all of a sudden your bosses or members expect that out of your club. Each year you feel like you almost have to raise the bar an additional notch up to achieve that goal. And for the most part it has. The golf courses in general have become much better. I guess we're cutting putting greens an eighth of an inch today. Uh, we're not too long ago. Uh, we were, well, when I started in the business, we cut five sixteenths of an inch every other day. Today we're cutting every day, rolling the greens. It's, it's completely different. The grasses we have today are just spectacular, all the new ones that are out. To think that we're mowing putting greens with these new grasses, I saw it, and I'm sure you have too down to three thirty seconds of an inch, if not closer. Well, that's a tenth of an inch. And to me, that's astounding. And yet it holds up because these are developed through the universities and private organizations. And I think that's great. The development of those strains of grasses that can take that close mowing is a step forward, unquestionably. But to think it's a living, growing thing maintained at that height, to me, is astounding. The superintendent has had a lot of help along the way. An enormous help to the superintendent, as well as to the association, has come from commercial involvement. We owe the people who supply the tools and materials necessary to our business a great deal of thanks. These people not only serve the needs of the superintendent on the job, but also help with the needs of the association through the dedication of their time and financial support. Pine Valley's Eb Steiniger, for whom the association's most prestigious award is named, puts it best. And I was particularly I'm very happy about that the, the award you were given out you gave to a commercial man because uh, you know the, the commercial people the Philadelphia commercial people really have done a lot for our association in Philadelphia in the old days boy if it wasn't for old man Gustin and Schumann and the Holman brothers and uh, and Mortman and and uh, uh, Oshley and all those fellows, boy, they really helped our association a lot. Association involvement benefits everyone. Many fine men have been involved with the PAGCS. Not only did they benefit from their association's involvement, but the clubs where they worked benefited as well. Me being involved in association wasn't just for John Siggy. It was for Waynesboro Country Club. And I, I truly believe that, that superintendents, young and old, 
should become involved in their lo local association. Well, certainly you always benefit. You grow from it. It's good for you. It's, it, it pushes you a little bit. It, it makes you uh, do things you ordinarily you would never do. And it, and it helps with your, your job at home, uh, back at your golf course. It, uh, in all, spe all aspects, it helps. It's, it's good for you. It's, everybody should get involved. Uh, this, this profession has been very, very good to me and to give anything back was, was always a pleasure. And Those who were involved were some of the best. And I, I, I always looked, every month I looked forward to going to the, to the Greenkeepers meeting in Philadelphia. And I used to play golf with, with Joe Ryan from Rolling Green and, and, uh, and a fellow from Spring Haven, Tom Doherty and Jimmy Comito from Well, Hunt those guys never drank either, so that's why you went with them, right? No, I waited outside while they were getting one. <laughs> no, <laughs> they were tough. Though. In those days, listen, this was prohibition days anyway. <laughs> there were there wasn't any drinking done at all. Tell you though, about our association, I uh, I think we used to have and we still have one of the best uh, superintendents association in the country, and I remember we were we were the best for many years. I think Philadelphia golf course superintendents have had more presidents in the national than any other any other town. Yeah, you know, it's appeared, I, I Joe Ryan, right. Farnham, Paul Weiss, Leonard Strong, Siggy, and boy, you name them, we had a lot of them became presidents of the national. Well, here we are today after 75 years. We owe our thanks to a small group of men who joined together back in 1925 in order to share in experiences and grow together. They were looking to the future just as we must look to the future in order for golf to grow. Our goals should always be to maintain the best possible conditions no matter what resources we have to work with. Now I've been a member of this association for 20 years and I must say it's always been an honor being associated with such a fine group, the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents. Boy, why do you know where'd you get the joy that's filling your soul? What have you heard that makes you want to sing? I heard the word from the bird, it's spring. Yesterday morning I did see blossoms on the apple tree. I took a breath and thought, could it be it's green up time? Then I began to look around And in every field I found Greens were a-pushing up through the ground For a green of time Then sure enough the bluebells tinkled April in the glen And sure enough I fell in love with love again Then I started feeling awful bright had a thought that hit me right I'd have my honey dance with me tonight That have a time to welcome In the green of time Yesterday morning I did see Blossoms on the apple tree I took a breath and thought Could it be it's, it's green up time For green up time, then sure enough the bluebells tinkled April in the glen, then sure enough I fell in love with love again, then I started feeling awful bright, had a thought that hit me right, I'd have my honey dance with me tonight, then have a time. The green up time Mother Nature's spring clean in time Let's raise a din to welcome in the green, green up time